haven't made a video in a really long time and I'm really sorry about that. There's just been a lot going on lately. That's kind of the whole point of this video, actually. You could probably tell from the title is about my 2014, my previous year and how that was and and welcoming the new year and all that jazz. I actually wrote down things. I have it like planned out what I'm going to say. But basically, I just wanted to share my like year with you um cuz I haven't been completely honest with you guys in my videos in this past year. Um it's been a really really hard year for me. Probably like the hardest year I've had in a really long time. But 2015 is a brand new year with brand new things that are about to come. I'm starting college in September. I'm, I've passed my road test for my license finally, so I have my license. Um, and so I'm saving up for a car. And I'm newly single. Not newly, actually. I've been single for a few months now. Um, but it's, it's becoming easier and easier and I'm working on myself. It's going to be probably long. I'm going to try and shorten it as much as I can. But I just wanted to share how horrible my year was, I guess. A lot of my videos are about, um, like, feelings and emotions and um, helping other people and talking. And I don't know. I was on Tumblr, and I guess a lot of people didn't really have a very good year, so I figured it, you know, uh, just share it. So that in February, like, of 2014, like, my year, 2014 started out pretty decently. Um, I was with my ex-boyfriend, Caleb, and we were, it was going to be our one-year anniversary in February, actually, and, um, and everything was going good. I had a job, you know, and it was like, yeah, life was pretty good. Um, and then in February, Caleb and I unfortunately broke up. Him and I are friends, though, right now. Like, we've since become friends, and we actually hang out. I'm not in love with him anymore, and he's, like, not in love with me as far as I know, and, you know, we're we're good. Like, we're we're friends. But at the time, it was devastating. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to, like, shed some light on things. So when I was 17, um, I made that video, How to Quit Drugs or Deal with Addiction or whatever it was, um, which I can uh, link for you if you want. I made that video when I was 17 because when I was 17, I had a little bit of a... I went on a little bit of a drug binge, which lasted me about almost a year, like eight months. I was like really bad at like do, doing speed a lot, all the time, all the time. Super skinny, like it was, um, I wasn't healthy at all and I wasn't okay either. I was very, very depressed. But when I quit, I took it like really seriously. And I went to counseling. I went to counseling once a week. Um, like, one-on-one -on -one with the same counselor. I also went to, like, a group therapy session, like, once every two weeks. And, yeah, I was, like, I was really taking quitting and bettering myself very seriously. And I managed to juggle, like, I managed to juggle school and, you know, all of the counseling sessions and all of this. And I managed to do that and take care of myself all by myself at that point in time, like, I was independent. I was extremely independent. I knew how to take care of myself, and I knew what I wanted and how to make myself happy, and I was happy. I was I was really happy. Like, when, when I had quit the drugs, I wasn't happy, obviously, but after about five months of, like, working on myself and doing all this shit and just, you know, taking care of myself, I was, like, honestly really happy and independent and happy with being single and in a really good place. Um, and then I met Caleb. I guess I'm going to go a little bit back before I get into meeting Caleb, though. So I guess I'm going to go a little bit back before I explain the Caleb, Caleb situation. At one point in my life, though, I was a really innocent 
person. And I still am quite innocent compared to a lot of people. My first relationship, I was with the guy for two years. And I was, I was 15 when we met. Um, it was my first serious relationship. It was my first everything. It was my first everything. And I was, like, extremely innocent when we met because, I mean, I was only 15 and I wasn't, like, one of those kids who was, like, smoking weed when they were 12. You know what I mean? Like, I hadn't even smoked weed yet when I was 15. Like, I was I was really innocent. And then I met this guy and he was, like, he was 18 and I was only 15 and we started dating and he had, like, done things that I hadn't done and and the relationship was was a horrible relationship. But yeah, back then, like, I only started smoking weed when I was 16, and I only drank once in a while, like, on special occasions, you know? I was never, like, that much of an alcoholic or that much of a drinker. So after we broke up, I met this other guy. I, like, instantly fell in love with him, to be honest. Like, um, I had been with the other guy for, like, two years and never loved him as much as I loved this guy that I met after him. Like, I was head over heels for him, and... Anyways, when I met him, I was still pretty innocent. Like, I had... The only things that I had ever done was, like, drink alcohol on occasions and smoke weed. I smoked weed a lot, though. I was, like, a huge stoner. But I'd never done any other drug. I never drank that much. I, I like, never blacked out before. I only had sex with one person before him because it, you know, and, like, I was innocent and fragile because I was naive, um, and he was, like, the complete opposite of me. He, again, was older than me. I mean, I mean, I've kind of always gone for, like, older guys, but, um, and he had done a lot more than me, a lot of drugs, especially, and he, uh, he was kind of... He's kind of like your stereotypical burnout. He's done so many drugs that he was kind of like just burnt out all the time, like stupid. <laughs> um, but you know, I I fell in love. Anyways, basically he broke my heart because he was a dick, and that was my first experience with assholes. Um, and and it was hard. I think you're. I think everyone's first heartbreak is like the hardest one because you've never. You've never had to deal with it before, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know what it's like, and it's like you're so in love with someone, and you're just, like, not ready for it to end, and then it just ends, and they just break your heart, and then it's like, you don't want to accept it for the longest time either. You keep hoping that they'll come back, but, like, they're not going to. You end up having to take care of yourself. So, that was when I was 17, and that's when I went through the drug thing. That's how I dealt with, I turned to drugs, um, when we broke up, because he had hurt me, and I didn't exactly know how to deal with it. You know, after I'd quit, that's where that's where we get back to the whole Caleb situation. Um, I was finally happy. I was finally able to take care of myself. I, you know, it's like life was just really good for me. And then I, I met Caleb. Throughout that whole period of time where I was, like, single, like, it was about eight months or so that I, I did not even, like, kiss any guys, you know what I mean? Like, I stayed away from guys, because I had, like, zero trust anymore, and just, I had been so hurt that I just didn't want any other guy, um, so when Caleb and I first got together, it was like, he was a really nice guy, and I, but I was still really scared, and I would actually, the, for the first few months of our relationship, I, like, would have nightmares almost every night about him, like, leaving me, cheating on me, you know, like, hurting me, just, like, awful dreams, and I would obviously tell him, and then he would be like, oh my god, no, that's not gonna happen, and he, he didn't, that never happened. Even though I had, like, completely fallen in love with the guy before, so that was technically, like, I guess my first love, um, Caleb was, like, my first real love, I guess, because the guy before didn't, love me back, you know, he was just an asshole, and he was just, like, using me, and it only lasted for, like, two months, and then he dumped me, and it was just, like, horrible, and it was never, like, real, um, but Caleb and I 
broke up like a week before our one year anniversary like it it was like one year and and it was real and I really loved him and so when we broke up I was devastated I immediately started to downward spiral um I gave up on life I gave up on myself I stopped caring about myself I stopped caring about myself I stopped caring I stopped caring about um, my sobriety because up until that point I had still never touched drugs again throughout the whole year that like Kill and I were together didn't do them didn't touch them I was sober for like almost two years like it was you know well like a little over a year and a half I was sober didn't touch anything um but when we broke up I I stopped caring about literally everything I stopped caring about life I drank like every single day. My only goal in life was to get drunk or to like find a buzz. I just never wanted to be sober, you know? Um, and I'd like spend $500 in like one week on alcohol or just getting fucked up. Like I told myself that it was a phase, you know, because this was, this was like in February of like 2014 was when it started. Um, and I told myself it was a phase, but evidently it wasn't because here I am, January 2015, and I've only been sober for not even a month. Yeah, I'm starting all over, basically. <laughs> I started seeing my last boyfriend, who was actually in like one or two of my videos, whatever. Um, I started seeing him on my birthday, actually. March 9th, which, uh, 20, March, in March, 2014, um, and, yeah, so basically I was only single for, like, a month, um, and then started seeing this guy. He had drinking problems, you know, and I had drinking problems, or I was developing drinking problems, and so, even though, like, he had no job, and he had... Uh, he drank every day, though, somehow, and he was not really going anywhere in life and whatever, but he was still exciting to me because he wanted to drink every day, and I was like, hell yeah, it's, it's a drinking buddy, you know, and that's what he was for the longest time. When we first started hooking up, we weren't actually dating, we were just, like, drinking buddies who hooked up. It was, like, a really casual thing because I was, like, not ready for a relationship because I was still so in love with Kill. We were casual for a while, but then um, he kept pushing and he kept pushing and eventually we, eventually I gave in and we started dating. It was a bad relationship. When he, when he got drunk, he'd get very angry and I was always a really happy-go-lucky drunk, you know? So I was always like a really happy-go-lucky drunk up until that point, like, and yeah, I was like out. I was really outgoing when I was drunk. I was very, like, friendly, uh, you know, kind of flirty, but, like, not super flirty. That was just, like, my personality, really. Um, and just happy. And he was very, um, he would get very angry, um, while we were drinking sometimes. It, it only started, uh, about two months into it, actually, was when it started. Um, and he would get extremely jealous if I was giving my attention to anyone but him. Um, especially if I was giving my attention to other guys. Even if, it, if I wasn't doing anything. Um, and he would start fights over nothing. <laughs> um, just really stupid fights. And he, But he would really get mad at me and and I wouldn't be able to defend myself because no matter how hard I tried to talk to him, he he would black out and he just would keep going and fighting and and he wouldn't stop. He would just like put me down a lot too when we were when he was in that um, state of mind. And then, yeah, he would put me down a lot. Don't get me wrong though, like um, he never hit me. You know what I mean? Like he was extremely angry when he got drunk because he had his own issues, I guess, and I accepted that for a long time because I loved him in a weird way, I guess, um, but he wasn't 
he wasn't violent, you know what I mean? He wasn't like a bad person. I'm not trying to say that he was because well, there was really good points to our relationship too when we were sober anyways. Um, it's just that when he was drunk, he, um, he just turned into someone else, I guess. You know, that really wore me down. Like, first I had dealt with breaking up with, like, the love of my life, and then I was drinking all the time to deal with that, and I never dealt with that emotion, you know, because as soon as we broke up, I instantly started drinking, instantly started to just, because I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with these emotions, I don't want to deal with myself, I don't want to do anything, I just want to, like, give up on life, and I did, I just gave up on life, and so then me and this other guy started dating, and quite frankly, I did fall in love with him, I, I was really in love with him, and, and we were together, and, and it was whatever, it was nice, but, you know, he wore me down so much, like, he put me down when he was drunk, and it was just, it was a, a very hard relationship. Loving him was a really hard thing to do. He rubbed off on me, you know? It it rubbed off on me. The relationship itself um, affected me in a way that I didn't really realize until just about a month ago. <laughs> it rubbed off on me, and now when I've, I've turned into um, him, I guess you could say. I black out and get angry, and it's not who I am. That's not who I am at all. I pride myself, actually, on being a chill person, and it's not me to be to be angry when I'm drunk. I, I was always a happy-go-lucky drunk. I was always happy, and now when I get drunk, I get angry for no reason. I guess the point of me, like, telling you all this, though, is the fact that, A, I have not been sober. I have not been sober for this past year, which started in February, though. January, I was sober. <laughs> um, but starting February, I was not. And I've been doing... I have not just been drinking. I have been doing speed and uh, coke. Um, occasionally, it goes up and down. Um, the starting of, around the summertime and the starting of the year, like last winter and then the summer that just passed, I was a lot more into, like, drugs and I was partying heavily. Um, but now I've slowed down and I've really slowed down. I decided that I am starting all over now. But I wanted to make this video because it was 20, 2014 was really rough, you know. I there was a lot of emotions that I didn't deal with. And and now I am dealing with them. I'm dealing with them now. But by not dealing with my feelings, it just made things worse on me. And that is like the point that I'm trying to make is that um it's okay to have a bad day, and it's okay to have a bad week, or a bad month, you know, um, but you can't hide those feelings, and you can't think that alcohol or drugs is going to fix it, because it's not, it's going to make it worse. It might feel better at the moment, because you're numb, and you don't feel you know, you're not feeling it because you're fucked up and it's numbing you out and it's a good feeling to be numb. I know that. And it's not a good feeling to be sad. It's it's not a good feeling to be heartbroken, to, you know, be depressed. Those are all, like, not good feelings. Um, but you have to, like, feel those feelings. You have to acknowledge the fact that you're you're sad, and you have to keep on moving forward, you know? Life is always going to be, like, one step forward, three steps back kind of thing, I feel. That's what it seems like it is, anyways. Life isn't easy, you know? But, um, you can't keep going back and then just keep going back. If you do go back, 
you have to like accept that and then move forward again and and deal with it there's no point in regretting things and there's no point in feeling sorry for yourself either there's no point in beating yourself up over things that you can't control or things that you could have controlled but you chose not to because it's in the past and it's already been done yeah so you made some mistakes I am like the queen of making mistakes but you can't regret things because everything happens for a reason and I am a firm believer in that to be honest I'm a firm believer in the fact that everything happens for a reason and fools call it coincidence you know but we know it's not coincidence it's fate things happen and when it seems like too much of a coincidence it's because it's not it's because it's supposed to happen 2015 is the year for positivity and for becoming the best you and the best me that I and you guys can be. I know this video wasn't, um, wasn't like my usual videos, I guess. It was kind of talky and long, and if it was boring, I'm sorry. I like to open up to you guys, you know. I've, I've been on YouTube for, like, two years now or so, and it's amazing. I mean, I don't have as many subscribers as, you know, a lot of people do, but I have a fair amount, and I love all of you so much, and it means so much to me that when I put this video out there, people watch, and people listen, and that means the world to me. I am getting better. I am finally ready to deal with everything that I have not been dealing with. Thank you for watching. I hope that your guys' 2015 is going to be a good year, despite if 2014 was bad. I wish you all the luck in the world. I know this is coming out a little late um, for the new year, but hey, whatever. Um, and we'll get through it together, you guys. Love you.